Hello, hi, it's Liz here and today I thought I would add a tag to my tag concertina journal which has not seen the light of day for many a long month, if not over a year. Um, yeah, I got this um, journal in a sale in the art shop in Glasgow, um, I don't know, about three years ago and I've gradually been adding um, some tags. So today I thought we would do a tag, a nice large tag. Um, I just cut the tags from any piece of scrapbook paper. This is 49 in market, so it's nice and thick paper. And I just use a template and just roughly cut a tag for the size of the page. Um, so let's just get on and decorate and um, yeah, add a tag to the long forgotten journal. So, I've gathered some bits, um, some greens. This has already got quite a heavy pattern on it, but I'm not too concerned about um, covering that up at all. L little bits of it maybe shined through. So, I thought we would do some stamping and some die cutting and uh, use these little bits of green and fabric that were in my little scrap box. So the first thing I did was I die cut this from the other spare piece of this paper. Um, I just thought that peeking through might add to the layers. So I don't unfortunately have the name of this but I think it might have been Memory Box. Um, it's just a, a leafy I don't, because I store my dies in a CD, a large CD wallet with magnetic sheets, I don't keep the packaging, but I'm sure if you could find a leafy die, no bother. I also have this stamped out and fussy cut. Um, this is this from Dilutions. It's Further Around the Edge, DYR34513 um, from rangerinc.com, Dilutions. Um, so I stamped it on, first of all, on the book, old book paper. Um, I used my Versafine to stamp uh, because I'm going to colour this one. Um, with water-based ink uh, pencils so you need to use um, something that's not going to bleed into your colouring and I also stamped it in the book page uh, so if you don't want to colour um, I'm not going to add any colour to this I thought the book uh, paper just shining through was quite fun and uh, we'll see how the layers go we'll probably cut this down maybe maybe to the air we'll, we'll see how it how the layers build up. Um, I want to include this little bit of thready fluffiness as well, maybe in the background, but we'll see. We'll see how all that develops. So yeah, like I say, I stamped this onto, I uh, put this onto an acrylic box, uh, loaded it up with the Versafine Onyx Black, and of course you end up with this nice stamped image which we will colour. So we can just move the Versafine out the way there and I've got my little plate to gather my a little piece of napkin <laughs> from Starbucks. The paper that I stamped on is from this Dela Rowney can you get that? It's a um, mixed media, so you can in it includes watercolour. Um, I buy this really cheap when it's on sale in Hobbycraft. Quite often it's reduced. So every wee while when I go to Hobbycraft, I keep my eye out for um, the, the paper. So I'm going to use my pencils today. These are watercolour pencils. They are, let me see if I can find one that's still got the, the label on it that's hardly been used. 
Here's a nice one that says Derwent Ink Tents. This one's navy blue. So it's Derwent Ink Tents pencils. But any watercolour, watercolour pencils, um, you'll need a little bit of water. So that's not how it comes out of the tap. <laughs> it's um, water that kicks about the room and every wee while I, uh, I refresh it. But that's not happening today. So just, oh, well this is how I do it. I just lift off some. Um, paint onto the the non-porous surface, whatever you might want to use. You could use your acrylic block, which is just an old saucer. Anything that the paint's not going to seep into. And then because I'm going to fussy cut this, I am not too concerned whatsoever. Oh, there's a doggy here. About staying in the lines. Nah. Not not necessary, I think, when I'm going to be fussy cutting. Now, I'm not going to be fussy cutting right to the edge of the paper. Um, right, no, not to the edge of the lines. So it means I'll get a little bit of colour overlapped onto my um, you know, the, the image that I'm left with, I'll do these ones up the top are more yellowy and then we'll get a nice contrast, I think. You can see how easy this is. And if you want, you can let that layer dry and then get a deeper colour. It's something you can do, but you're not going to be patient enough for that today. Let's just give these lines a little bit of a, a thing. Right, maybe some darker green around some of these. And maybe some more yellow at the top there. Because it does dry lighter um, than what you would think. And of course leaving little bits of little bits of white gives it that kind of washed out watercolory look. But I think that'll do this for now. Wash my brush in the dirty water. We'll just put all that over there. 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 Now, while that's drying, because that's just a little bit, just a shade too wet to cut out just now, I want to show you what my focal point's going to be. It's going to be two little birds. And these are... from this set, also by Dilusions, and this is How Does Your Garden Grow? And I've already stamped the little arrow of the buds, and we will stamp out this, this chap. Again, I'm going to add a little bit of watercolour to him or her. <sighs> is he going to fit in that space? Yes, he is. So we're using our Versafine. Oops, I don't know if that's done a wobble. No, we're okay. Give him a little bit 
I was forgetting and I nearly put all this away. So we'll bring this back in. And I think we'll just use the same colours so that it all tones in and blends. So little bits of green and yellow. So all the decorations are down, the tree's gone, everything's gone. That's it for another another year. <laughs> I think that'll do him. Right, what stage were we at here? Clean the brush and just lift that in the pencils away and we will fussy cut him as well now yes and this is a little bit dry now I know that people watching videos don't necessarily want to watch someone fussy cut and for those who don't know, fussy cut just means cutting something out. I don't know where it comes from. I have no idea where the term fussy cut. And if anybody knows, I'd love to know. I tried to Google it once and no, no joy, no explanation. Um, the way I fussy cut when it comes to things like this, because I don't always leave a border, sometimes I leave the border, and sometimes I don't, but what makes me decide is if there's bits that you couldn't possibly go right up to the edge, like these stems, there's no way that I could get right up to a line and keep a line it's just a single line and fussy cut it out. So, because those lines are there, that makes me not go right in. Now, you'll see that I'm leaving bits, kind of slightly bigger bits. I will go back and do them. The reason I leave them is because if I spent time doing them just now, the leaves would be really floppy and I wouldn't have anything to hold on to, like this bit, when I'm cutting down the other side. Does that make sense? So I can go into these bits on this side a little bit and then go back to what I'm using as my holder, if you like. So, we can now go back and take our time and go into these bits that we didn't catch the first time. You don't need to go into every single one. I think once, once you're done and you look at it, it'll stick out if you feel you need to go into a bit that you haven't cut. So, for instance, when I look at that, I think I really need to do this bit because this bit up here looks too, too left out. Like it needs a little bit taken out. See, and that just makes a difference up there. So there we go, that didn't take too long. Right, and now the bird is good to go. Sometimes I do this, if there's quite
quite a lot of excess. You don't want to be bothered. And again, I'm leaving because there's no way that I'd be able to cut up either side of his skinny legs. There's just no way on earth that that's going to happen. Now, what you could do is you could just cut off his legs and stamp onto your piece and then stick on the fussy cut piece on top. Do you know what I mean? So you would stamp the whole lot and then fussy cut the main body and then you would have just skinny legs. But I'm not bothered. I'm happy to have fat legs. Well, they're hardly fat. I'm only giving them a wee, a wee border. <laughs> and we won't fuss too much over these feet. We'll just give them a wee... Right, let's just bend that up a wee bit so that we can just get in there and go up. And then we'll just do these feet so that we've got something to hold on to. And then we'll go up the other side. And that should just... there. Grand! So, let's put this tag together. I've got my old magazines here for the gluing. So, we want all this to make something nice. So, I thought... So, we've got the two main leaves. We've got our die-cut leaf. We've got our two little focal points. And we've got this background here. So I was thinking, we'll put that down. And then I think we will chop this. And we will... Chop this one further down. You can always put them back together again if it's not working. And we've got our Right, so what I don't like is this die cut too many stems. So I'm just going to cut. Let's look and see here. And here. And here. Little minor surgery. That's better. Now I think I want them to be right at the ground. We'll just pull that up a bit, put that. Okay, now, I think that's good, but I want some words, and I'm thinking I'm going to stamp maybe. Let's see. 
oh that's my crazy birds it was nearly a crazy bird that was on here so i'm thinking this tag number this is tim holt stampers anonymous eccentric cms 448 i've used this quite a lot i've got my favorite ones already <laughs> And although there's quite a lot not used, I have used it a lot because I've used the same ones over and over. Right, let's put that over there. So tag number, oh, tag number hasn't been, hasn't been used. Let's just push it out. I seen somebody took all the um the bits in between off and just left the stamps. Maybe that's quite a good idea. Tag number. Now will it go that way so that it's not too big? Let's try. do we're missing the little star but that's fine let's see if we can get this off sometimes when it's just a small bit it doesn't and we'll put it on a little bit of this No, I don't know if this will tear. Let's try. No, I didn't. You know, I didn't think so because um, there's just something about it, the way that it feels. So we'll just cut it off. I should use my other scissors for that. No. Maybe we'll use that for the um for the little top. For a little top piece. And we'll just stitch it because I'm going to be stitching around. So I think maybe we'll um we'll just stitch that on there. Yeah, I'm happy with that. What do you think? Yeah, right. Let's get rid of the bits we don't need before we get confused. We'll put that on last and that one's last. Let's lift them off in order and try and remember. Do that, then that, then that, that, then that. And that little piece there is first. Right. Whoops. I went with up out there. And then 
this piece. This piece. Now let's just double check we're on the right track here. I think I want this further down. So now the shops are just filled with sales and I don't, I don't like the sales, it just seems like a, like a jumble sale, not keen, not keen on the sales at all. So the, once the shops are back to normal, that'll be better. <sighs> I don't like the messy shops. <laughs> now... I'm still not, when I see it stuck down, all the feet and all the stems at the bottom there. That might be better. I'm thinking a wee bit narrower. Just a wee scruffy bit. For the feet to sit on. Yes, I think that's. And I'm going to be stitching round this anyway, so I'm happy just to use my my glue stick. That's better. I'll need to watch if I'm going off over the edge. Yeah, we're all right. I didn't want the tail to stick out too much at all out the edge of the book. So that's fine. There. I think they're foraging for food, are they? <laughs> Don't know what they're foraging for. I think are those leaves in the right place there. Well, they're there now. Yeah, they're in the forest. Now, I was thinking the tag here, but you know, I think maybe the tag there now, because there's, no, there's nothing there. So I think we need to switch that to the other side. And put that there. And just give it a little bit of... Glue stick. Just now, because it'll maybe get caught in the stitching. Yeah. 
So I'm going to take it to the sewing machine. Oh, I don't, do I want to? I might lift up his tail and his beak. It's not quite stuck down yet. I don't want to stitch through his tail and his beak. <laughs> but I'm pretty pleased with that. Yeah, I think it will look, uh, look pretty good. It's a nice bright one compared to the last few, although this was, oh, I suppose there are a few bright ones. Okay, so I'm going to go to the machine and um, give it a little stitch round. A little bit of stitching, I think, makes all the difference. And I do like it. The only thing I would change was I would put the white die cuts a little bit higher up. I think we would be better just up a bit, round about this. this. And I think when I did the plan, uh, before I stuck them down, I think they were up a little bit. But, um, but yeah, it's okay. I'm okay with it. And we can add it to the collection. I think it will need to go over a little bit to that side. Let's use the three in one to stick this down. I had an argument with the sewing machine. Um, the little bobbin underneath the little spool um, ran out of the thread just here and then I had a rather large knotty knot thing going on there. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> I mean, it's not an expensive machine but now I know the, the spool running out is not the machine's fault but a big knot thing is really not what should happen I don't think anyway got there got there in the end after a bit of an argument with it <laughs> so here when it ran out I just started again and then I used my black finer a uh, fine liner pen just to fill in that little gap nobody will know apart from you and I and that's okay I'm wondering if it should have a number here because it's got tag number. Hmm. I'm wondering if I should have other words as well. Let's see. Not all who wander are lost because they look as if they're wandering. Yeah. Oh, that's not straight. So that's, let's see, show you, small talk ideology. Right, so I think that's it for today. That was a little bit of fun. The tag book, still hundreds of pages to go. And of course, the other side, <laughs> it's, going to be, it's going to be a while, but this sits on the, um, on the, top of the cubes with all the other journals and whatnot so it'll be nice to to have it um, a few more in it so once in a while we'll do a tag for the book and, uh, and get it stuck in so yeah 
So thanks for joining me today. If you've enjoyed the video, a thumbs up is much appreciated and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.